Hey there, Internet. So I'm back at the lathe. Worked out a few bugs. Gonna see if I can't put a thread on this thing. The moment of truth. And that's not it. All right, so um, I'm gonna use some Delrin that I have, some Delrin scrap, and um, this will mill a lot nicer than the HDPA. So I'll just uh, turn this round, flip it around, and then uh, we'll do some threads on that. That's better. I'll try not to break it this time. Alright, that should be more than I need. The same down here. A little less danger. Man, that thing deflects. All right, do it. So, back it out, one turn, feed it back. Okay, back in. And I'm pushing against this. <laughs> it's just too close. All right, um, I'm going to go in. And forward and go. All right. Back it out one turn. I don't know if that's enough. I'm going to go two turns. Reverse. Okay, 
forward one two and a little bit extra just as a spring pass here we go All right, that's it. Cause I'm an amateur, amateur. All right, there it is. And disengage the screw, bump it up to 1.25, and we're gonna cut this real quick. Oh, that's way too much. Okay, is that cutting? Okay, that's my zero. All right, we actually have a lead in this time. Okay, lower the speed, hit the throttle, we got an engagement, let's do it. Oh, I gotta feed it in, feed in a half a millimeter. Engage. Looks okay. Back it off one turn. Reverse. Right. Come on here. Forward direction. Engage. Two turns. One, two. All right, so then we're going to go in another quarter millimeter. Forward direction and engage. The chip's not coming out. Well, that's interesting. That's really interesting. Ah, uh, spring pass. Oh, I'll take the point again. Back up two turns. Two. Reverse. And it's reverse. One turn. Two turns. Go a half a millimeter. I mean, why not half a millimeter? Let's just go crazy. Forward direction. Giddy up. That's not it. Alright. I guess that wasn't supported well enough. It looks good, though. Wow. 
The Moment of Truth, Part 3. There it is. Got the wing nut wanging. So I got my my one millimeter and my one point two five. And um This is supposed to make a, uh, a special compound adjuster because these pitches are close, but they're not quite the same. It's I call it like a compound screw. But yeah, it, uh, I hit the number on this one pretty good. That cut sounded terrible, but well, it looks terrible too. A little, a little too much material. Um, the uh, the cutter, your cutter, initially, it's going to just scratch the surface here. And it's only going to go in a little bit. And if you try to plunge it straight in, what's going to happen is you're going to be cutting on all of the surfaces of the cutter. So it, it essentially turns it into a forming tool with a whole lot of surface area. And it, and it really dramatically increases the cutting forces. So what you really want to do is you want to start your cut here and as you work in you work diagonally and as you work diagonally you only cut off one of the edges of the the cutter because the previous edge is cut so it's really hard to do with this little tiny thing but um, you know you, you, you would start well you would you would start where you can see it which I can't really see it let's there any way I can get this where I want it All right, so you start there, and then you move in, and you move in, and you move in diagonally. Um, Joe Pizinski has a whole bunch of videos on on the mechanics of threading. So what I need to do to add to the, the lead screw is I need to have a button when it's in slave mode, in threading mode, and the, and the lead screw is slave to the spindle. I need to be able to hit a button and have the pointer that's indicating the tool position move over the right the right offset so that when the tool goes in the um, it's it's effectively going like this without having to set your cross slide it's not hard to do um, you just got to decide which side of the cutter you want to have cutting the work I don't know if it matters um, and then there's just a little bit of trigonometry to figure out uh, how far in each pass needs to be based on the thread pitch. And I think you can do that as a percentage of the thread diameter. Um, and so if it calculates that, it would also be nice to display that on the screen so that you, you, you do your first scratch pass and then you feed it back to the original position and you hit the button and it says, go ahead and feed in whatever the number is. If it's 0.2 millimeters per, per pass, then it tells you the right amount to feed in. Um, for that offset. So anyway, yeah, I, uh, it's working. Um, plenty of features to be added, plenty of testing to do, but I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, my previous tests didn't work because I couldn't figure out what the dip switches on my <laughs> stepper controller said. So once I got that worked out, um, everything was working great. So if you have any questions, uh, leave a comment down below, and uh, thanks for watching.